This is the German made Juba chiming clock. It's a triple chime. It chimes Westminster, St. Michael, and also Whittington. This is the next clock that I'm going to take to pieces and service it. You heard there that the, the chime is relatively quiet. It's a lovely chime, but it means that the hammers are out of alignment. They're obviously too high, they're not close enough. They're just touching it, and only just. So I'll turn that round. Open the back door. Realign it. It's a bit dark in there, so I'll put a torch on so you can see. You can see the dead giveaway there that it's a triple chiming clock. There's eight hammers, eight straight gong rods instead of the usual four. So the hammers, that's what they should sound like. As opposed to how quiet they were before. Right, we've got a little bit of work to do on that, but it certainly seems that the clock's in relatively good shape. The chime function is working. It's not correct. It's out by a quarter of an hour as it goes round. I'll wind this on to quarter two. six o'clock that's easily fixed of course we just move the hand across but we'll do that once we've stripped it down and cleaned it and oil it and put it back together again we're ready to take the movement out of the case now the first thing we do is of course we remove the hands otherwise we can't get the movement out of the case though so I'll loosen off this nut here at the top that's holding it the hands on You'll notice I'm using flat jawed pliers. There's no serrations on there. We don't want to make any marks on any of the clock movement parts. So we always use flat jawed pliers. If you can't find them online, you can use a normal set of pliers and file the teeth off to make them smooth. Right, we'll take that knurl nut off. It holds the hands on, we'll put that aside. Gently remove the the minute hand with our fingernails comes off easily. Here we go. Now to remove the hour hand, I'm going to use one of these, but a modified one. These little pieces of celluloid are used to slide in under watch hands when you're removing them. And what I've done is I've cut one wider because the hour pipe on a clock is much wider than a minute hand arbor in a watch. That just stops getting any damage to the face of the clock as we remove the hands. I'll use a, a screwdriver, put it underneath, leaning on a bit of material. We can then just lift it up so we can get our fingernails under it. And then it comes off. As easy as that. And no marks on the face of the case. We'll look at the case in a moment. It's not in too bad a shape. There's some of the varnishes come off in places. But we'll look at that in a moment. 
right. Now, turn the clock over. Undo the back door. So we can see what we've got in there. I'll have a look with the torch and see where the screws are that hold it in. They're not very easy to get at actually. One up here. If I can just see it with the torch to get the, the slot of the screwdriver into the slot of the screw. It's a bit hard to get at. Right, we'll unwind that. Push down a bit harder. I think it's jumped off again. Yeah, we'll have to recut the slot in that screw before we put it back in. It's a bit in the damage size and the screwdriver keeps jumping out of it. It is pretty damn hard to get it. Plus it's in at an angle which doesn't make it particularly easy. But we'll certainly have to repair that screw before we put it back in again. It's moving now, but it's at a pretty serious angle. All right, pair of tweezers, see if we can pick it up, even though it's way down there inside the case. Nope. Right, we've got another option. A pair of these artery clamps. We'll see if we can pick the screw up with those. That is hard to get. All right we'll take we'll let that side for a moment we'll take another couple out and that'll they'll probably drop out once we take the movement out. Now there's another one there. That one comes out pretty easily. I'll take the rest of these out then we'll come back again it's going to take too long finding these things and taking them all out. I've solved the problem of not being able to get the screws out. A super duper long pair of tweezers. That solved the problem. We can get down deep inside the, the case. Here we go, another one. That's removed all the movement screws. I'll take the rods out. Two screws down here, we'll undo those. And the bottom one done. Then once we've removed the rods, in theory it'll be easier to get the movement out. I'm holding the rods with my left hand to make sure they don't slide round in there and cause any problems. Now we'll see how we're going to we'll have to lift all the hammers up first. See how we're going to get them out because they're pretty pretty long. Alright I'll hold that on the the back there and then Set all the hammers down and then remove the movement. Which isn't going to be easy by the look of it. There's a hammer caught up down there. It's better. We can put it at an angle and bring it up. Those arms that attach it to the to the case, what's causing the problem at the moment. But if we turn it round sufficiently and hold it up over the top of the 
the rods. Gee, that is a tight fit. Hammers down. I think the rods, one of the rods is caught up there. Yep, caught on one of the hammers. It's got him. Undo those. Let them lie down. Now we can have a struggle and try to get the, the movement out. That's there. With the, the hammers being out here, it needs to lift up this way, but it's not wanting to come to... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. That's got him. Ah. That was a bit of a drama. All right, I'll put that aside for a moment. Now I can... Oh. See if I can take the rods out there. And he just... There are the rods. The eight rods. They need to be straightened out a little bit. A couple of those that could too close together as you can see there. We'll straighten them out later on. Put them aside. Have a quick look at the case. The mark on the back. The little sticker is the London Jewelers. Carl Madsen and Son, New Zealand. Little bit of marking on the back. Some scratches there. A little bit more scratching over there. Overall the case isn't in bad shape actually. A little bit of crazing on the varnish. We'll run over that with some 320 paper and bring that down. A little bit of varnish off here. A little bit over here. We'll re-varnish that darker than the base here. But other than that it's it's not too bad. Actually, the condition it's in. So we'll re-varnish that and then we'll run over it with some of my mineral oil and beeswax polish and that'll bring that up rather nicely. All right, put that aside. And there's our movement, finally, after all that drama. That's the back of it. Turn that round. There's the front. That's uh, on off for the chime. If you don't want to hear the chime, you pull that lever and that turns it off. The hammers seem to be all right. I think they've, they've got new leathers in them. There's a nut there that you can see. The whole piece will come out and then the hammers will fall out. I think that's what we've got to do. Right, we'll undo this nut here. That'll come off pretty easily. Get another tray to put it in. So we keep all our parts separate. Drum goes there. Take that nut off. Then turn the movement over. Those pieces on the end um, are coming off that we looked at before and we weren't quite sure about. All right, I'll take that piece off, comes off. There's another ferrule in there. I'll, I'll see if that that may slide up. Yep, that comes off. A spacer for the all the hammers. Take that off. 
If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell.